Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today you are seeing this pen pouch because I'm going to make a collection overview. And the collection overview of today is very nice, very interesting to me because it is of a model that I really like. And it is the Parker Frontier uh, model. And the Parker Frontier was a pen that Parker had uh, in their collection from 1996 to 2012. Then it was discontinued. This, uh, this range was a cheaper range that uh, cost around 20 euros. So it was above in, in terms of price, it was above the Parker Vector and below the Parker 45. So it was a very nice, accessible pen for everyday use, maybe for students. In my opinion, the overall design was based on the Parker 51 look and it has a pen that is still in the collection, which is this one, the Parker Sonnet, which is ver a very similar pen. And this pen is usually made, I think it is always made of metal, a push fit cap, a, a nib that can be steel or gold, a long section, and a click in place cap. So, this is the Sonnet, this is a a more expensive model, but we are going to see the Frontier, with, which looks a lot like this, but much, much uh, inexpensive than this one. You can still find some around on eBay or some old stock. Some of the pens are really hard to find. I got information uh, from some Parker pen catalogs that I have in my computer, some another part of information and the main part of it I got it from the uh, the website parkerpens.net which is a very important resource of information and so just let me ask you to like and subscribe the video and the channel respectively and now let's take a look at the collection and here we have the Parker Frontier collection and as far as I know I have the whole range of these pens and so let's start in this video I will not do any writing samples but I want to show you all the pens that consist of the collection so the first one I have is this one this is what this was the first Parker Frontier that I got and the color of this one is metallic grey with Diamondite Z trim. This Diamondite Z trim is a, is a kind of a, a black coating that Parker developed for this collection. It is quite nice. This is a pen that says on the bottom of the cap Parker Frontier there. Then it has Made in USA or UK, some are made in UK. And then it has the date code. The top of the cap is very simple. It has the arrow shaped clip, also in this black coating. And the barrel of this collection, of most of the pens of this collection, is ABS plastic, molded plastic. So very nice and quite resistant. This one has this little, like, it is almost all black with little grey. It's not like a shimmer because it doesn't shimmer, but it's almost like a shimmer. I must say that. Then we have a section that is made of plastic with a rubbery co uh, coating. And then this little piece, this little collar be before the nib is where the cap clicks in place. And then we have this nib, it's not a very big nib, like more of uh, maybe a number 5 or a little bigger, 
and it has this kind of design. There, then later there was another kind of design, different from this one. The feed is quite bulky, as you may see, and it has their F for fine nib. Just let me show you the differences for the Parker Sonnet. So it's not that different. Same kind of nib size, same kind of section size. This one is a little thicker. It also has the rubbery grip. This one, this one doesn't. Metal, plastic, this is a little girthier. So, very similar pens, but of very different price ranges. And when the cap, the barrel and screws, sometimes it makes this squeaking noise, which is nice. And it takes a Parker cartridge or converter. This one has a, an empty Parker cartridge. So, this was a nice 20 euro pen. And now that I showed you the parts, let's go on with the models and I'll do it faster. So, just to repeat, this is the metallic ray with Diamondite Z trim. There was another one of these color group, which was this, and this is the metallic burgundy, and you may see it's like a metallic color, but it is plastic, uh, burgundy with also that Diamondite Z um, coating on the cap, and also with a black nib. Then, we have, I don't have them by order, because I cannot really say which was the order they were put uh, in the market. I don't have that kind of information. I can, I could check the dates, but some may be, the, the dates may be quite variable, and the dates are on the cap, so I believe that uh, an older cap could be used in a more recent pen, so it's not that easy to see, but let's take a look at them, not for uh, time uh, order. This one is the Chroma Flare Blue. Or, no, sorry, this is the Chroma Flare Teal. These two colors are very, very hard to, to, to see. This is the Chroma Flare Teal, this is the Chroma Flare, Chroma Flare Blue. And you may see that they change a little bit their colors depending on the light. It's very hard to describe, opaque barrel also here, and this one has a very nice color variation. This, I, th I think this is really nice. This, this looks much nicer uh, when you're looking at them than when you're just looking at them on camera. Unlike the other two that I showed you previously, these ones also have the rubbery coating on the section of the same color as the barrel. Both have the cap with the with chrome trim, so with still in natural color nibs. And when we look at these, these ones have that different Parker logo when Parker changed the logo to this kind of more cursive P. Now, let's go on and look at something a little bit different. We are going to the translucent series. And the translucent series was made of a black, a blue, a red and a green pen. And this is something interesting. I will start by the end. And we have the green translucent. And I think it is quite obvious that this is a translucent pen. But we can have a little flashlight here just to check it. So you can see it is translucent. It doesn't look that much just because we have the converter inside. But this is a translucent green. No doubt about it. Also, chrome trim and the section is black again. 
then we have the red also the same translucent barrel then we go for the blue which is a kind of uh, purplish blue completely translucent and then we are going to a place that is more interesting and I can't find real information about this. This is the black translucent and it's not translucent. The same kind of pen as that one. It was advertised as translucent, but I don't find it to be translucent at all. So the flashlight is inside and I can't see any light going through the barrel. So the translucent black is not translucent. This leads me to this leads me to a point where I have to ask your help if you can help me. When I look at the uh, websites of uh, stores, we can still see listings of the translucent black, but I cannot see by the pictures any. Uh, I, I can't see if they are translucent. They always they always look solid black. So we have two things possible. First, Parker meant to have the black translucent, but for some reason they couldn't do it translucent, so it is not, and the translucent black is just opaque black, that's fine. Or there was a translucent black that I don't have, and if any one of you have a translucent, really translucent black, please let me know. And, and there is also a uh, a solid Parker Frontier black, but there is no reference at all in the catalogs or in the, in the internet about a black, solid black uh, Parker Frontier. So, who knows? I, my guess is that this is the translucent black that actually is not translucent. But if you know anything about it and if you know what I'm saying is wrong in some way, please let me know because I want to provide the best information I can. And we go on to, the, to another series. And the next series is the two-tone. And we can go to this uh, Parker pen, parkerpens.net to have the information about these pens. And this is quite interesting in this point also, because the Two-tone pens, they're called two-tone uh, green and black. This is how they're called. They have gold plated trim and gold, sometimes they are sticky, and they have gold plated nibs. So, just this black section has almost every other pen. So, you have these this two-color, two-tone green. This is on Parker net, uh, parkerpens.net. Also, on that website that I really recommend you to check, you can also see this two-tone black, uh, red and black. And you can see one that I found quite easily on shops here in Lisbon at the time, which was this one the blue and black. This is not listed on their website. However, there, was an, there is another one that is listed that took me, for, took me for a long time to get one. So I think I may have this pen since 1996 or 1997, so about when it was released, the first one, and the last one I only got in 2020. And it is this one the two-tone white and gray. This is not, this is listed on that website. This one has the Diamondite Z cap and trim, not the two-tone, and it is very, very hard to find. I found it on, in Brazil, on a, a Brazilian website, and when I made that exchange deal, um, for the to, to exchange the, the Montegrappa Oriental 
Zodiac Dragon for the Visconti Homo Sapiens uh, Bronze Age. I this one was included on the on the exchange. I I, I gave him also a, a Parker 45 and I got this one. So it has a black nib. It is made in US and it has two tone white and black. I never seen this one in stores. This is very very hard to find. This came with this be uh, better quality uh, converter. I don't know if this was supposed to to come with converters. I think not everyone, no, not every pen came with converter. And it has this like smoked black um, color. The white is not transparent, but because this is a strong light in a white barrel, it looks very translucent, but you can see that the darker parts are a little bit translucent. Like there, I think you can see, you can see the threads inside. I think this pen is quite beautiful and I enjoyed it a lot to find finally this pen and to be able to get it without having the costs of the costumes, Portuguese costumes are very expensive and he got me this, my friend got me this on the trade that we made. So quite interesting pen. And now let's move on to, we have still a few more. And the next ones are the flighter versions. Uh, Parker calls flighter the real flighter, they call it to the ones that have gold trim, but let's call it flighter chrome trim and flighter gold trim to be easier to, 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 to mention them. Black rubbery section, the gold plated nib and the black rubbery section and the steel nib. So made of steel, very beautiful, and I think these fit perfectly in the very wide range of steel of Parker steel pens. Now we have another collection made of three pens. And these ones were the were the Luna. That's how Parker called them. So first they had the black uh, rubbery section, the chrome trim. Let's take a look closer if I can show it to you. These ones were made in UK. I don't know if you can see it. They have the new, that is no longer the, the new logo and they have these very nice. It looks like they have how can I tell you? It's like a texturized paper that is covered in a transparent resin. It is very hard to, 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 to explain, but it is a beautiful color. So they have all chrome trims, all the black rubbery section, and they were available in three colors. The Luna Purple, Luna Blue and Luna Grey. I think these are amazing colors. And I just want to show you two of them next to the other two. So this is the Luna Grey and the Metallic Grey. They are definitely different uh, colors of the barrels. And also the Luna Purple with the Metallic Burgundy. Also different, but I think they match very nicely together. And now let's go on. We are reaching the end and we have another, let's call it sub collection. And these pens, one was made with chrome trim, the other one with gold trim. And these two are called color shift and it is the color shift dawn and color shift twilight. So one more for the sunset and the other for the sunrise, a warm color and a colder color. And they, this is described as pink-orange because when you change the angle, 
it may look more like orange or more pink. It is not. It looks almost even yellow or greenish in some in some angles. It's not that easy to see in artificial light, but I think this is quite a, a correct depiction of the color here with my light umbrella. Then we have the twilight that is blue on blue. So it's like a teal on a blue basis and you can see this color shift. It's quite interesting. Also the black uh, rubbery um, section. Sorry, the word was missing. And let's go for the final four pens. And we have here one pen that is not listed on that parkerpens.net and it was not easy to find. This is a, a Parker Frontier white. It has a white barrel and black section with the chrome nib. And I have to say that this has this little problem. It is quite discolored there. It is a yellow. It is a little yellowed there. I think there was where the price sticker was in time. So someday I'll need to get a, a new barrel to replace this one because this is yellow, a little yellow. You see here it is perfectly white and there you can see the yellow part. Another thing that I just wanted to show you that I forgot and I think you can see it in the, this one is when the Parker logo changed to the more stylized P with the, the arrow the design of the nib changed. This is the first design and this is the second design. So quite different and I have to say that I like this one better. This one looks, looks cheaper. However, the, the performance of both nibs is exactly the same. You don't find any real differences between them. And, and I I got the the caps uh, wrong on the cap on the pens, and I like to have them because of the logos to fit each other. So it's done. Now we'll go to the next three pens are also not listed on the Parker ParkerPens.net, and this one is a very nice one with a gold trim, and it is a demonstrator pen. It has also gold nib, the same section, rubbery section, and it has this barrel. Transparent, but I really find this interesting. I'm not sure this was a real production item or it was like a, a test that they made like a prototype and several got around. You can find them some on, on eBay and they are quite expensive. They are not perfectly white. You can see they have a, a greenish tint and they are not perfectly made um, in a sense that you can see there is some like waving inside and it is also a number engraved there and it looks like a 16 there. So I don't know if this means anything but I would say this is not perfect enough to be a regular production uh, clear, uh, clear, clear demonstrator Parker Frontier, but some are around and you can still find them for quite a high price and if I can find one now I'll put the link below for you to check it. And let's go for the final two and the final two are quite different from the rest of the collection. They are, they come together and they came together from India when my brother was working there for a couple of months and they are very similar to the other ones, the same model like this, the Parker logo there 
uh, on the bottom of the cap. However, I don't know if you can see a difference here. They don't say Frontier, they just say Parker. The other ones say Parker, Frontier beneath these ones, only Parker. So, quite interesting. And also, let me try to show you, if I can focus, the date code as an I first. And this means, as far as I know, India. These pens were made in India. Uh, by uh, an Indian pen uh, company, which is Luxor. And Luxor has the rights to produce Parker Frontier with this metal. They have metal, uh, they are all metal, except for the section. They are made of metal and they have um, this matte black coating. And you can see a couple of different things here. I don't think the engraving on the nibs is as perfect as in the other Parker pens that I showed you before. However, they perform well. The rubbery part on these is not really existent. We are talking about smooth plastic. And the finish of this black coating is not perfect. There is some places where it looks scratched or rubbed, so this is far from being perfect, but it is a nice addition and I have to say this is an official pen. It is really a Parker by Luxor, made in India with black coating. Just to wrap up this video, where I talked about the Parker Frontier model, which is a model that I really like, uh, what I need to tell you more about this is there is also um, a store on eBay that makes uh, an aftermarket uh, modification on Parker pens. They pick up, I think, this one, the steel version, and they gold plate the pens with, uh, I think it's 23 karat gold. So, there are gold-plated Parker Frontier fountain pens on eBay, but they are not official releases from Parker. They are Parker pens that were costume gold-plated. But if you try to collect them all, it may be interesting for you. I don't think I will get one because it's not an official one, but when I put them all together, only this slot is empty, so maybe it would make some sense to have a uh, gold uh, Parker Frontier. I don't know. So, here you have it. This is my favorite of the group. I hope you liked this video. I hope you get interested enough to try to buy one of these pens and try it. It's a good pen. It's very nice to use. It's very resistant. The only problem with it is when you use it for a long time, then the, the capping is no longer as secure. The, the cap won't fall, but you feel that is some, there is some play here. And you, and you have the, the ones that you didn't use that much, there is no play at all. But these are very good pens that were not famous enough. I think these pens, when they were released in, 2000, in 1990, 1996, and they went until to 2012 for around 20 euros. I think they just have a bad timing. I think that if these pens were released today, they would be able to compete with Lamy Safari as far as a quite inexpensive pen with lots of different finishes or even with the Caveco Sport. They are very collectible pens because they have lots of different finishes and it's quite exciting to get them all. I just think this was a bad timing. It is my belief that if it was released now, it would be quite a successful model. Unfortunately, they are not around anymore and fortunately, I have the whole collection now. 
I hope you liked the video. This was just a collection overview, maybe too long, but I hope it is useful and you enjoyed. I hope to see you next video. Bye.